It is a early Black Friday morning and it's time for the speed skating video podcast. All right, this morning we have a, a fine young European sprinter coming off her first Olympic appearance. Um, she is a national record holder in the 500, the 1,000, and the team sprint. And she also holds the junior national record in the 500 and 1,000. All the way from Romania, it is Mihela Hogash. Good morning. Hey. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, happy Black Friday to you. Happy Thanksgiving for yesterday. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's start at the beginning. Um, I cheated a little bit and I went and did some research and, and found a little bit of your history, but um, turning the clock way back to when I think you were about nine years old, you were at a park and you saw some people in line skating and it caused you to be curious. So from that point forward, uh, several years later, you appeared in an Olympics. So what uh, what happened when you saw uh, people inline skating? Well, I, I just wanted to skate uh, too. And then after I just uh, skated and uh, went to the trainings. And then I uh, said, okay, maybe I want to do uh, this sport for real just to be a good uh, performer. I mean, how long did it take you from the time that, that you tried you know, inline skating before you even realize that it's also an ice sport? Well, I think that it was when I started, it was April uh, 30th. So uh, then uh, in September, uh, my talking was, uh, uh, my my coach was talking about, uh, yeah, going on ice in Erfurt, Germany. So I said, okay, this sport is also uh, on ice. So it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Better than inline. <laughs> so did you, when did you start going to Germany to actually do the ice training? Yes, so I started on April and in December, I think I was lucky enough to go to Erfurt for two weeks, which was a lot for us at uh, that age. And yeah, we started with two weeks uh, in the season. So only two weeks of ice. Yes. And in every season, we, we went like two weeks and then maybe another, if would be okay, maybe three weeks and yeah, step by step. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get maybe... anything done in two weeks? <laughs> yeah, I know maybe I was 12 and we were only staying three weeks or maybe four weeks in the season. So it was hard for us to, yeah, to get everything we need into this short period. That's ridiculous. So let's take a look at this picture. <laughs> look at how confident you look. Oh my God. With your red helmet. <laughs> yeah, red is my favorite color. Yeah, you, yeah, can you see. had those cool red boots. Why did you get rid of those? I'm really upset. Yeah, I, I just wanted to change the color. They are the mm. same boots, but it's uh, just the color change. But maybe I will go back to red. I don't know. I Who, really like boots. Do you use mine? No, I mean, are are they customs? Uh, it's Viking. If you oh Viking, yeah Vikings. Yeah, sorry. So the but are they customs or are they stock boots? Yes, after uh, uh, your Olympic Games, I got new boots. And uh, they were custom made. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, those red ones were super cool. So <laughs> Thank you. I, I speak for all of us when I say you need to bring them back. <laughs> okay. So when, so, I mean, only two weeks on the ice per year. I mean, I just, I can't even comprehend that. So that means you're doing a lot of inlining. Um, were you doing a lot of inline competitions? Well, not really. Everything we do for inline in during the summer, we do with our ice uh, skating uh, technique. Okay. So, yeah, for my coach, it was very important not to get into the inline uh, technique. 
and ju uh, just try to to learn from the beginning the ice technique even if we wasn't on the ice <laughs> and also uh, we didn't have so many competitions on inline we just have our nationals and maybe some Romanian cups and yeah every like, yeah we do have some uh, competitions but also with the speed skating rules so yeah we can we have to change the lane we have to start from uh, really? yeah yeah i've never heard of anybody doing that before that's really interesting yeah but for us i think that uh, it really helps uh, helped us because we learned the skating technique from the beginning yeah i know we still have maybe from inline some uh, mistakes on ice but i think that yeah it was uh, it was okay for us so if we if we fast forward a little bit, um, you did your first junior World Cup racing in 2015. So by then you're about maybe 17 years old. So at that point you'd been on ice, you know, for a while. Clearly, uh, in order to make it that far, you know, by the time you're you're a late teenager, are are you spending you know months in Germany training at that point? Yes, I think that when I was 17, a year before Youth Olympic Games, I stayed in Germany from December to February. So I had three months only on ice. So yeah, I, it, this is the, the year when I uh, improved a lot from 43 to 41, I think. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a big jump. So I, I found some footage of the Youth Olympic Games as well with that um, that four-person team sprint. Do you remember that? Yes, it was really fun. Yeah, that was really interesting. I've never seen anything like that. I thought it was uh, an interesting concept because it, it got everybody involved and they just kind of made teams up based on ability. And your, your team podiumed, so that was good. Yeah, for me it was very good. And also I think that this distance is uh, very exciting also for others to see, to watch. So also for me was yeah, for me it was a big opportunity to meet other people uh, and also yeah, to have a good result for my country. What was that the first time they did a Youth Olympic Games with with winter sports? It was the second time. Okay. The first time was in uh, Innsbruck in 2012 and then the second time was uh, in Lillehammer um, how did do you know how you qualified for that yes I, I knew because uh, we had our strategy <laughs> let's say because I was the I, I was uh, we we didn't have an older uh, skater so I had to qualify by myself also, I was a junior, so I had to uh, get some points in the World Cups. And I remember, I don't know exactly how many spots there were, but I was very happy because I was fast. Also, uh, before there were two cu World Cups in uh, the Netherlands and in uh, Ber Berlin, uh, Germany. And in the Netherlands, uh, I wasn't in a very good shape. But in Berlin, I, I did uh, some good races. So yeah, I knew from that point that I'm uh, qualified. I just mm. uh, waited for the yeah for the official result. It's interesting, um, actually. Do you remember Austin Kleba? Yes. Yeah. So always entertaining when Austin's around. <laughs> yeah, I know we are the same generations, but yeah, I can I can look at some skaters and we were like we are like oh we were both at the Youth Olympic Games, then uh, to Beijing. Now we are here at the World Cups. It's very nice, and I'm happy that I I entered in this world since I was a junior. Also for me, it was very hard because yeah, from everything I have, but it's it's very nice now. So let's talk about that a little bit. That, that's a good theme. So you're you're from a, a smaller country that does not have an Olympic oval. So you guys have to train in a different country. I guess just to, for lack of asking the question more interestingly, you know, how do you make that work? I mean, I guess especially financially, you know, where does the money come from? How do you make this happen? I think that since I was young, yeah, my luck was uh, the coach because he was the one that uh, made it all happen 
yeah, he tried to get the money from sponsors to our sport club. And uh, yeah, I think that many years then when I uh, started to understand where we are at, I think that I consumed a lot of energy because of that. Because there were many times when I uh, qualified for the words or for the World Cups, but we didn't have money to go. So it was frustrating, frustrating for me. And uh, it, it was hard to understand also at that age. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> that age to, yeah, to see, okay, I, I have to uh, go for it and just uh, don't think about money anymore. Now we are okay because our Olympic committee helps us and uh, also our sport club. We have also some sponsors from time to time. But now it's it's okay. I'm trying not to focus uh, uh, about money because uh, now I can see that it consumed me me a lot, and uh, mm. my focus needs to be on the ice. You you touched down your coach, so I'll just show him real quick. There's the two of you, Team Romania at the uh, Olympics. So I I think your your situation with the coach that you have is extremely unique because this is the guy that you saw when you were nine years old and you just saw skating for the first time and he's still your coach. I mean, that, yeah. that's highly unusual. So tell us a little bit about him. Well, yeah, we were joking and he said that, oh, until you were 14, I didn't know that you are in my team <laughs> because we were a lot. And, uh, I started and I wasn't that good. My body was, uh, yeah, kind of weak. And then I tried and I see that I saw that uh, the others were very maybe talented or or their technique was very easy to to do. And uh, for me it was hard because I knew that I have to work uh, harder than others. So um, yeah, then. Um, at 14, I think, or I don't know exactly the age, but then uh, he skated behind me and he said to me, one day you'll be a uh, national champion. So for me, it was a big, very big deal that uh, I, I could feel that he trusted me and he believed in me. So then, uh, yeah, we started to to work harder and to get to know each other. And also he knows uh, my body very good. He knows uh, what kind of trainings are good for me, and also when I'm sad or when trainings are not uh, are difficult to me or something. Yeah, he knows. But yeah, we are lucky. Also, uh, the whole team is uh, is like that from uh, 2009. Yeah, it's still. I still think it's just really incredible that you know for this long it's been the same guy just carrying the torch. He can't leave. You have to let him know that. <laughs> you have to keep going. What's his name, by the way? Bogdan Stanescu. All right, so in December of 2019, you made your ISU World Cup uh, debut in Kazakhstan. Um, do you remember how you qualified for that race? Yes. I know that uh, I made uh, the time limit, and I was very happy, but also... I, I made the time limit a few months before. I made in uh, 2000 and 2018. But I wasn't sure that we have money to go there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't expected to go because I knew that uh, we still have uh, some problems. And uh, I was still a junior, I think. I don't know. But yeah, as Michael said, OK, we will go to Kazakhstan, Astana. And uh, we can see from uh, where we can start uh, the senior uh, league. So how did you feel going there? I mean, were you nervous? Did that seem totally different or was it just another set of races? Well, for me, I loved it. I, I love the World Cup feeling. I love seeing everyone also in the week before World Cup. It's very nice because in every training you can see everyone and it get, it it gives me a lot of uh, energy and uh, this is uh, what i do uh, why i do speed skating because uh, this is my favorite part but i remember that i was alone there as a skater 
so I was in a very bad shape, but my races were very good there. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So if we fast forward a little bit more than um, the Heron Vein bubble in, in 2021 March, um, you went and did those races. Do you remember that situation? Yes, I was, uh, I had COVID before the workups, but it was a situation and I had to stay in my house four weeks so you you can't you you can't imagine how hard it was for me mentally and also i had the, uh, a small gym in my kitchen <laughs> and also the slide board i i tried to <laughs> to have something in my apartment which is not big <laughs> and it was very hard for me but uh, and i when i went to insel after i stayed four weeks in my house and uh, seven weeks without ice, I went in Insel and I skated one lap alone and my heart rate was 170. And I said, okay, so I have to start again because I was in a very bad situation then after COVID. But yeah, I, I had like uh, four weeks before uh, the bubble. So uh, I was getting in shape. But in the bubble, again, I was alone without my team, and I tried everything I could. At least, you know, you got more senior races at that point, and then the following fall um, in 2021, being an Olympic year, then you had the full World Cup circuit, you know, that you were able to do. And, you know, clearly you, you, you skated well because you made your way to Beijing, um, but maybe for for people like me that don't totally understand the process how you know what what did it take for you to earn a spot in beijing so there are like um you need to be to have the time limit for olympic games you need to have the points for olympic games you can qualify by points or you can qualify by time but our uh, but uh, a country a normal country doesn't have spots uh, so if I wanted to make a Romanian a spot for Romania, I needed to qualify by time because this was my strategy. So I uh, wasn't in, I didn't skate in uh, Norway, I think. It was the first workup because we, we wanted to prepare the uh, workup in Calgary and also in Salt Lake because, uh, yeah, these are the fastest uh, ice. So we went, all, yeah, we went to Tomashov. Because, yeah, we needed a workup before these two. And also we went to Calgary to train because my teammates needed uh, time limits for the workups. So, uh, yeah, we skated uh, in Salt Lake and then we came back uh, in Calgary. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, was ma I was able to, to do a, an okay time to qualify. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. So even after you got the times that you were looking for in those races, did you know at that point, was it guaranteed that you would be in Beijing? No, I, I did, I did, uh, I did by myself the, the list, you know, because I knew exactly the rules. I knew, yeah, every country has three spots. Yeah, I knew because I read the, the rules, like hundreds of times, you know, when you need to qualify, you need to, to know the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I mean, on my list, it was okay, but I didn't, you don't know exactly until the official result come. So in December, uh, it was the first official result and I saw the list and uh, I still had hope because uh, I knew that uh, I, I have to wait for January. But uh, yeah, I was so stressed, so mm. stressed because I knew that for Romania is very important. And I really hoped that uh, with my qualification, we can grow the sport in Romania and maybe we can, uh, we can build a nice string and make the things uh, better here. So this was my focus, focus but uh, it was so hard you know, we were the last sport that find out the spots for the Olympics. Really? So it's 
it was very late yeah so how do you find out what what is the mechanism does somebody send you an email and say you have a spot or they publish a an official list or uh, the federation and the the Olympic Committee gets the email and the confirmation. Okay. So I so. had to wait to from the federation or for the Olympic Committee to tell me. So then you're just sitting there waiting for them to contact you. Yes. And then when they contact you, you're waiting for what they're going to say. Yes, actually they contacted uh, they contacted my coach, so every time my coach's phone rings i was like oh just check the phone <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah so what did you do when you found out that you actually had the spot i was at the training and it was morning and my coach was so happy because i think that he knew before like two hours before he told me which is not nice <laughs> <laughs> he was he was very happy and I didn't know why he's happy because I'm dying there. <laughs> and before training, he came to me with the official email because, yeah, maybe he needed the, the official email. And he saw me, he, he uh, gave me the email to see. And uh, then I saw that also I'm qualified for 1000 and I was very happy. All right, so you you showed up in Beijing. You had mentioned to me before that that you you didn't feel like you were in the the best position going into the races, but I I still want to watch this one because we can talk about it. So let's take a look at your Beijing 500 real quick. Ready. So what our viewers don't know is I was watching you while we were watching that and you were you were <laughs> scrunching up your face in that final 100. So you had told me that you were not super happy with that skate other than maybe the opener, which I thought the opener was solid. So tell me about the skating there or tell me about your experience at the Olympics. Yeah. I was also alone there without a team. I tried to go with other teams, but it was complicated because I had my program. I races in I raced in one day. Maybe the others were skating another distance, so in another day. Yeah, it was hard for the program also to train by myself in a lot of trainings. And uh, yeah, I don't know my muscle didn't feel right there also with the i had t tempo in the trainings before the uh, before the olympic games and uh, yeah it it didn't feel right but the technique in during the trainings before i felt so good so i've never skated uh, better <laughs> but only in trainings apparently mm. and in the, uh, during the race I felt okay, I think, and uh, I I had that I have a good rhythm. But when I see the uh, <laughs> the video, yeah, it's very bad. I I don't like to watch myself skating yet. I'm not uh, where I want yet, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm getting getting better. So that's I mean maybe that's a good um, that's a good setup to the next question. So. You know, you've achieved a lot already, I think, because, you you know, in the beginning, you know, only going to ice for a few weeks a year, that's just ridiculous. But I think, you know, you've got to look back and say, okay, I've done quite a bit in this short time. How do you get to the next level? Um, what needs to what needs to change for you? What how, how do you get faster? Well, right now I'm way, uh, actually in the summer, I worked a lot on my strength and on my power and also yeah we still keep the resistance training for also yeah for sprint but uh, yeah we i worked a lot on this part on power and also to gain some muscles and some weight it could be nice for me 
but right now in the ice season i'm trying to focus more on the technique so i i am trying not to lose my power as as much as i can and also to use my body weight i'm trying not to push up <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to put on the sides yeah i i still have some uh, mistakes i can see them they are big for me <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i'm i'm trying to get to, to take step by step i'm still not uh, pleased with my technique i hate watching myself skating but i want to get into the point where i love watching myself skating but i need to fix these things so i can it will be nice for my eyes <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think you're the same as the rest of us. You, you, you think you're doing things a certain way and then you see yourself on video and you just, you're horrified. So <laughs> that's not unusual. You're the same as everybody else. So you're going to Calgary, uh, Monday. Yes. I'm flying to Calgary and I'm trying, I have two, three weeks uh, for the workups. Yeah. I, I awesome. will be by my own first week maybe with austria or i don't know <laughs> i will see yeah see who see who you can train with um and then your coach will come a week later yes after senya yoki yes he has the uh, world cup under 23 with my uh, teammate max oh okay so will yeah. there be other romanian skaters in calgary yes sure we still have uh, a lot uh, to come but uh, yeah we are trying to take it easy also we have uh, my teammate bianca which is a, a, who's a very good skater but she doesn't have the time limit yet for 1500 so we we just wait to make to wait her to make the time limit and then she can make the debut in in 1500 meters in the world cups because she has uh, for the other distance. Gotcha. Okay. When are you going to skate at 1500? I don't know. I'm skating 1500 only for training in uh, Intel, only before the World Cups. When, uh, yeah, when I try to prepare the 1000, I'm also skating 1500, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves a 1500. Yes, but only for training. <laughs> so you've you've talked about, you know, kind of your dream of making the sport bigger in Romania and maybe someday, you know, having an oval there. Do you, do you have a plan or are these all just dreams at this point? What what do you think needs to happen? I think that first I need to end my career to focus more on this because I'm trying not to waste my energy on money or, or something else. Right now, I, I just want uh, my parents to to see me in uh, the World Cups. So I'm trying them to, <laughs> I'm trying to make them to come uh, in the World Cups or in words, everything to, I'm to see this part of me. <laughs> because yeah, they can see me, but only on YouTube or somewhere else, but I uh, need them to s watch me live. So have they never watched you live? No. Really? Not even the uh, Youth Olympic Games? No. Oh. I know, but I think that I will uh, get them in Incel next year for the World Championship. Yeah. I hope. It's my dream, yeah. And for, uh, Euro uh, for Romania, Yes, we had a plan uh, also to build an ice rink here in Brasov, in Hoyana Brasov. We, uh, there is altitude and with the, I don't know, the words in English, the pressure atmosphere and everything. It could be the fastest ice, uh, not in Europe, but it can be in the world. Yes, could be very nice. But uh, yeah, there are some things that I it's, it that it didn't it doesn't depend on me. Yeah, well, we'll focus so, on that later. Yeah. Um, so this year, um, there's a world single distance. Um, is that something that you think you can participate in? Yes, I really hope because I I qualified three times in a row for the worst, but I never, I never skated. Oh. 
And right now, I, I think that this is my ear to skate the words, finally. Do you think you'd be able to do 500 and 1,000? Yes. I I want every competition to skate also 1,000, even if my hun- uh, my 500 is, uh, is, I don't know, the favorite or better, I don't know. I, I love the, also 1,000. Which one do you like better? I don't know. It depends on the, the day, <laughs> but I think that's 500. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think you were a great guest. I really thank you for spending some time with us. We'll be looking for you in Calgary and then hopefully at the world championships this year. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. You need to build that oval in your hometown at altitude. So we have another fastest ice in the world. I hope so, but. I don't know. I don't think that it will be in my career. Maybe in the youngest <laughs> skater. Yeah, your nephew. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is a great episode. Thank you for spending the time with us, and we are out of here.